What's up guys, Headphones Neil here for, with a slightly different kind of review for this particular episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. And as you can tell from what you're looking at, or if you're not quite sure of what you're looking at, I wanted to share what I did to create a do-it-yourself speaker um, for your home desk or kitchen or just a general speaker to make while you're at home for personal use. So a few weeks ago, um, my work had sent everyone a pencil holder as kind of thank you for all the hard work and um, from working at home and having to deal with everything related to all the stuff for working at home related to coronavirus. And I got to thinking that since I don't actually really use a pencil or a pen that much to have a pencil holder on my desk, what else can I use the pencil holder for? And since I'm listening to a lot of music and podcasts throughout the day, I got to thinking if I could use this pencil holder to make a speaker and if there's kits or some way I could do it myself at home. And after a bunch of research, I found that all I really needed was two pieces of hardware to make it happen. The first is, of course, the speaker. So you'll see that on the right side and the left side, I have a couple of speakers made by a company called uh, Dayton Audio. So I'll have a link in the show notes to the specific model number and link that I use to buy them off Amazon. But the model number is something like DAEX25 or something like that. They're sound, um, ampl or sound vibration speakers. So you really only need to mount them to a surface in order for them to work. So it worked nicely for what I was doing. So you'll see that I mounted them to the sides of the pencil holder. The other piece of hardware you need is, if you wanna go wireless like me, is a Bluetooth receiver. Um, I didn't catch the brand of this receiver, but um, it's pretty simple as far as what it does. So um, on the bottom left is the on off switch. Um, there's a couple of lights, one for red and one for blue when it's connected and powered. On the bottom is a USB-A or micro USB-A connection. I'll include a link to the cable I bought because the one that it comes with, I think is only like a couple of feet, maybe it's like only one to two feet long. And if I want to run a cable behind my desk and keep the speaker on my desk, then it's not quite long enough. So I bought a six foot cable, which works nicely as well. So as far as the setup itself is actually really simple. The speakers come with their own little mounting sticker. So you can see kind of on the um, leg right here for uh, one of the speakers is there's you can kind of see in there there's a little um, sticker so you can easily mount it and stick it to any surface so that's pretty straightforward um, the receiver the Bluetooth receiver I bought does not come with any sort of um, adhesive to use so I bought some Gorilla tape some double-sided Gorilla tape to be specific and um, I'll use this side as an example so what I did was I stuck the tape to both sides of um, the pencil holder and use the backing in the middle as ex extra um, um, tension to hold the tape and I ran strips across up to about here and then from there once I was ready to mount the speaker I um, unpeeled the other side of the tape and mounted the speaker there um, from there all you need to do or in the case here is because the um, Bluetooth receiver has these little metal tips for a different kind of speaker setup, I ended up having to snip the ends of the cables and strip some wire. So if you have wire strippers already, then that will make the job easier. Um, all I did was use a knife and some scissors to strip the ends of the cables or to cut off the ends of the tables to get those metal pieces off and then strip the wires a little bit so that I could plug them into the four holes. Um, so that process probably took me a little bit longer than it needed to be because I didn't have the pencil or the wire strippers. So overall, the process probably took me about 30 to 40 minutes. The process of sticking the speakers and the receiver probably took a little bit, didn't take too long just because the speaker, obviously it was easier to attach. The speakers, I just needed to make sure that I could stick the legs, um, or there was enough room to stick the edges of the legs. As you can see, because this is kind of a home setup for myself and not really going anywhere, I didn't really care about too much about the position and the edges. Um, but once you get that all set up, then all you need to do, because it's a Bluetooth receiver, 
is um, turn it on so you'll see that there's a red light that is powered and then a blue light as well to indicate that your um, phone is connected. The pairing process is actually much like any other um, Bluetooth headphones if you ever connected a Bluetooth headset or another Bluetooth speaker. So um, you basically, once you power it on, go into your Bluetooth settings. The device name is a, something easy to remember, like P3 or PE3W-BT. So uh, once it comes up, you'll connect it like you do any other Bluetooth device. And from there, you can start, once it's connected, you can start playing any other music or audio like you want. So I'll play a couple of podcasts at various volumes so you can hear how it sounds. The sounds will vary depending on the room you're in and the surface that you're placing them on. So um, as you can see right now, the speakers are on a wood frame and then on a comforter. So the sound will be a little bit lower. But if you stick it on a wood desk or a glass table, then the sound will be a little bit uh, louder. So it all depends. Um, as far as overall loudness, I don't really expect to take it, you know, to a park or any place that's generally loud, but I don't see why you couldn't take it at all. But the volume or the sound will vary depending on what you're actually placing the speakers on. So um, if you have it more on a platform or let's say, or uh, let's say a foam table or a foam platform or a cooler, then the sounds will obviously be sound a little bit different depending on where you're placing it. So I'll play a couple of different podcasts so you can hear how they sound. I'll adjust the volume up and down. I'll start with the Financial Times podcast and then the Morning Stream. So you can kind of get a gauge of how they sound. I'll, and then I'll raise and lower the vo volume. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so that's, I guess, enough of a sample. So um, I raised and lowered the volume because just to give you an idea that depending on the podcast or songs that you're listening to, the volumes might be a little bit different. So for whatever reason, Financial Times is a little bit lower volume, so I had to increase it from about 33% to about 70%. The morning stream is recorded a little bit higher. Um, for them, I know they use a little bit of uh, volume normalization and levelization, so I had to bring them down um, to about 35 to 50%. So it all depends on what you're listening to and the loudness of your uh, music or podcast. So uh, rock might sound a little bit better because these speakers are a little bit more on the tinny, trebly side. Um, as far as, for example, rock or EDM or tracks that are more bass heavy, you might not necessarily have as much audio, so you'll have to turn it up a little bit. Um, and then it's depending on the surface you use, you may have to um, adjust accordingly or think of, take that into consideration based on what you listen to more or find a little bit of a different surface or place the speakers a little bit further apart or closer together, depending on the kind of sound you get. So what I would recommend in this case is if you have not stuck the speakers to anything yet, but you do have something you want to stick them to, then have someone hold down the speakers or hold them down yourself, play different tracks that you want to listen to, see how they sound at different levels and see the kind of feedback you get. So if you hear a lot of extra vibrations or um, it starts to um, over modulate because of the volume then you might have to find a different surface or um, adjust the positioning a little bit so that the noise doesn't cancel itself out and you can avoid any extra feedback and modulation so that's all there is for this particular review so um, as i mentioned i'll have all the link related links in the show notes to the uh, speaker modules that i bought the uh, bluetooth receiver um, and the charging cable that I bought. 
mostly just be, the charging cable is mostly just for convenience. So if you find that you're going to be close to a, that your charging cable is close to a port or a charging port, then that's fine. The cable that it came with is enough. But if you anticipate that you're going to keep your um, Bluetooth receiver, um, not necessarily plugged in, but if your um, wall outlet is further away from where you want to keep your Bluetooth receiver, then I will I will include a link to the six foot charging cable, but I will recommend buying a longer cable so it's easier to charge. Um, but that's all there is for this particular review. So I thought I would share what I put together. Um, if you want to spend a little bit more time than what I did, then of course you could do things like um, place the uh, Bluetooth receiver the other way around. Um, in my case, it's kind of tall. So it, I was thinking also, you know, drilling holes down here at the bottom for the wires and running the wires underneath so that it's down at the bottom and instead um, doing something where the position is like this so the charging cable is at the top and all the wires are hidden underneath. But um, be just because of how it all came together that's kind of, it didn't really work out like that for me of course these late the wires for me are long enough so i could of course run them around the back or something like that but for me i'm just lazy like that and didn't for me doesn't really care i mean at the end of the day i might do something like put a sticker or find a little piece of wood i have lying around and stick it on top and um, to cover it up but for me I don't particularly or it doesn't really bother me this was just a quick um, weekend project that I wanted to put together um, to see if I could do it find another use for this pencil holder and um, see how these speakers work out overall a simple project and as I said 30 or 40 minutes most of the time is really in stripping the edges of the wire so I can plug them in Pairing is quick, so once you get your speakers mounted and Bluetooth receiver connected to the speakers and to your um, phone, then, I mean, it's really simple. You, overall, I'd say, depending on how long it takes for you, I mean, it shouldn't really take more than an hour. So overall, a pretty simple project and an easy way to have speakers on the go and um, something to do um, while you have extra time to spend at home. So that's all there is for this particular review. Um, so um, the links that I mentioned I'll have in the show notes for the YouTube version and for the audio listeners only. Um, so you can um, get the same kit that I got and um, I can try to help uh, answer any questions. But overall, a fun little project and uh, easy way to repurpose something you might ha just have lying around at home. So even if you have your own uh, little case or if you have um, some a stand or something you have lying around and you want to turn it into a speaker then this is uh, definitely a way to go to um, get that done but that's all there is for this review so if you want to get in touch with me you can find me on twitter at pateln01 the website is pateln01.com for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning into this review and until next time